In this video, I'm going to be telling you what you have to do when you find yourself in a new country. But concerning your health, because that is an important aspect of your life. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Come, 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 come. It's your girl soft life duck welcome to the channel this is gonna be my very first video besides my introduction that doesn't count guys that doesn't count in this video I'm going to be telling you what you have to do when you find yourself in a new country but concerning your health because that is an important aspect of your life without wasting much of your time let's get right into it come, 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 come. Um, I picked this as my first topic because I've got a lot of friends and even in the country where I live right now I advise people and give them these tips but they never take it I don't know why but they never just take it I'm gonna give you this tips and I hope you do take it serious because you would never find it anywhere else trust me let's dive right into it without me wasting any more of your time my first point will be health insurance health insurance up there why is this important to me i have seen people on tourist visas like have emergencies and something i've noticed that protects them is their health insurance you could just like fall in the bathroom and have like a cut and in your country of residence it might not be so expensive because you probably have like your insurance covering it but when you get to a new country it's more expensive for you as a foreigner and I, I don't think people take that into account so they just think you'd go and say I'm a tourist and people will be there to help you I'm sorry it doesn't work that way since i live in turkey and most of the friends i have live in turkey i've lived in turkey for like 10 years so i'm used to the system here and i can explain everything i know about the system and the way it works here so the insurance policy is divided into two in turkey you have the government insurance policy and you've got the private insurance policy the government insurance policy is also divided into two. There's one called the SGK and the other one is called the GSS. SGK in Turkish means Social Gouvernement Kurumu, which means Social Security Institution. This handles more than the health insurance, obviously, from the name. GSS means Genel Salik Sigorta in Turkish and in English, General Health Insurance. So I'm going to be explaining who benefits from which let's come back to segeka that's the social government kurumo people who benefit from this are like employees working in like hospitals banks depending on where you work as long as you've got um your work permit which is called a chalishma is knee in turkish as long as you've got that your company applies for a segeka for you when you visit a government hospital that's a public hospital everything is sorted you don't need to pay a dime for anything blood tests computer tomographies mris seeing a specialist everything is free but you can also use this insurance policy in a private hospital the only difference is not all private hospitals accept this insurance policy and even the ones that do you still have to pay something okay in private hospitals some don't accept some do but you might still have to pay but in public hospitals you don't pay anything when we move to gsa which is the other type of the government insurance policy gsa meaning genel salik sigorta this is used um, when you're a student, when you're unemployed, just everything that doesn't fall under employed. Anything you'll be doing yourself as an individual, you most probably get 
the guest is safe. So with this insurance policy, you also get the benefits of Segeka. You go to a government-owned hospital and you get all your treatments, all of your tests free. You go to some private hospitals. It might also work. It might not work. Up to you. Let's move over to the private insurance policies. These are quite expensive, but keeping in mind it's not as expensive as Gesese. But when you also look at it with the Gesese, when you go to the hospital, the government hospitals, everything's free. But the problem with the private insurance is it's it's not unlimited there's always a limit so depending on the insurance policies and the rates you could have a situation where your insurance contract states that the insurance company would pay 60 percent and you pay 40 percent or the insurance company pays 80 percent and you pay 20 percent or they pay 90 percent so the price varies depending on which you pick and also depending on the hospitals so you know they are very expensive hospitals your average hospitals yeah the ones they're just like Bleh. i'm sorry but yeah so <laughs> depending on what hospitals you know as a person you'd like to visit or get treated in you can pick any of these insurance policies i hope i've been able to convince you and not confuse you if you're a bit confused and you live in turkey you can write your questions and drop your questions down below in the comment section moving on to point two emergency contacts you know even as a doctor i never thought that was important and the reason why i didn't think this was important was in nigeria that's my home country i never really had an emergency contact like they tell you next of kin next of kin next of kin but you just think it's in the case of when one person is dying and they need to transfer assets and those things like you never just think emergency contact so when you decide to use someone as your emergency contact it's more than taking a person's phone number and just adding it there or just putting down a person's name like call this person when i'm sick so this person needs to know if you've got a chronic disease what do i mean by chronic disease if you've got hypertension diabetes hiv hepatitis like i know these are like private information but when you make someone your emergency contact this person needs to know these details why is it an emergency let me say you're unconscious or you're delirious or you're disoriented and you need to get like important information they obviously cannot get it from you and then they call your emergency contact and they ask these questions does this person have any chronic disease does this person use any drug on a regular basis so this is things you have to tell the person the person needs to know your blood group like some people do not know their blood group do you know your blood group what is your blood group are you all positive or negative a b a like what are you do you know please make sure your emergency contact is someone that you trust and also make sure this same person has the number for some of your family members not necessarily everyone in your family your dad your mom your brother your sister like so even when the hospital informs them before because they're the closest to you in your country of residence they can then pass on the message to people back in your home country got it good now moving on to the next point and this is my final point know the closest hospital to you or know the closest primary health center 
to you your primary health center is more important than the hospital trust me so let's say you've got symptoms like cough headaches like whatever and you've tried home remedies and they don't seem to work the first place you go to your first point of contact should be your primary health center or your um your family physician like in turkey it works a certain way i don't know how it works in other countries and even in nigeria there are these health centers like everybody knows those are the places you go first and when they see that oh this is more than us and we're sorry we cannot solve it then they direct you to a bigger hospital one thing most people don't seem to get is the fact that when you go to the big hospitals first you increase the workload of that hospital and you don't need to do that you do not need to do that you would waste your time you'd waste the time of the doctor like if it's something simple and you also know it's simple go to your health center go there they are there for you they would solve your problem and when they cannot they would send you to the hospital and they would direct you to a specialist. If they feel you need to go to a neurologist, they'll send you to a neurologist. If they feel you need to go to an orthopedist, they send you there. If they feel you need to go to a physiotherapist, like they send you somewhere and they direct you and say, go to this person, get an appointment, do this. And you can't go to a big hospital without an appointment. <laughs> Yo, it's 2022 like we need to learn this you cannot go to a big hospital without an appointment no one would see you and you would have wasted your time this brings me to the end of my video i hope you enjoyed i hope you liked it please share with your friends like comment below if you've got questions or you've got feedbacks recommendations please comment below i'll be sure to reply as soon as i can well, i'm gonna see you in my next one bye <laughs>